Hello? Good evening, sir. Hey there. This is uh, Osaka Jack, I believe? Yep, that's correct. Hey, uh, nice to meet you. Or I'm really good at impersonating him. I'll have five and a half minutes devoted to just... Oh, wait, let me get my cat to meow. Come on. You can do it. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. This is this is great. She meows just like a cat. Meow. Come on. Come on. You can. <laughs> oh, and um, when draft came on with Jay Holler, they're screaming at each other. I was mad I missed a little bit of that because they have a great back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I was rather upset last night. It finally got cold enough where I had to use my gas heater. But this is a new apartment, and I had not planned everything. So the cord from the gas spigot to the gas heater was not long enough to reach my bedroom. So I actually had to set up a system of cardboard boxes in a arc near the heater so it would curve the heat towards my bedroom. <laughs> so I have like this I would racetrack shaped uh, array of boxes in my place now that's guiding the heat towards my bedroom, which is what the delivery is. It's a longer gas cord so I can actually not do that tonight. All right, I'm trying to think of a question that I can u- apply that and harvest an answer like that in future podcasts. Oh, think- What's the most ridiculous contraption you've ever created in your life? What's the most interesting jerry-rigged device you've ever made? <laughs> I was watching, uh, yeah, there was one of the ones I was watching today here. I'm going to do a quick uh, a vocal warm-up. I'll put this mm-hmm. in the background. So- <laughs> Feel free to join in if you'd like. <laughs> the misty mountains go to dungeons deep and caverns old. We must away ere break of day to find our love. Okay, we're good. I think I'm going to save that for its own yeah. thing. What <laughs> the hell did I join a call to? I was like, I, ho- I, I really hope Final Drift. Draft- okay. I, w- I was like, surely he knows what he's doing, right? So, really quick. Um, Actually, you know what? I'll just do the intro now and we'll jump to it okay. right afterwards. This is FNGR, part of Limbo Podcast, joined by the following co-hosts. Y2K Toon Critic. Uh, Final Draft. Hello. And this week's King of Limbo, Asaka Jack. Hello. Now, let's see. Uh, before I get going, I've made it kind of a tradition, at least when I'm able to get the, the art on time. Get your reaction to this. Are you a fan of uh, Samurai Jack at all? I was more of a fan before I had my current screen name, I must admit. Because okay, I've had I hope you're not horribly people, offended. Oh, you're Jack <laughs> oh. and you're in Japan. You must be Samurai Jack. That's funny. Oh, no, yeah, don't look at those. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> with people doing that and this is uh I, I like this art this is really beautiful it's very much. i just okay. uh, i get occasionally right. tired of the same japan jokes all right then then i'm definitely going to make sure i was very sensitive about <laughs> that on this uh you've had a, a series of podcasts at everfree was there anything that you wish you could have done better um you know once you became more seasoned when you started there um i i really you know i'm not sure uh I think I would have liked to have gone longer, but at the same time, doing it by myself was difficult and really stressful for me. I think probably if I had the chance to do it all over again, after I had done it for 18 months, um, I stopped doing it every week, and I only did it twice a month. That made it a lot easier. I mean, it was still stressful. It was still difficult to uh, get done by myself, but I could do it without having panic attacks. Or having my entire day week devoted to stress. Oh dear, this person canceled on me. I've got two days to get an interview done. So I think it might have been a mistake to me for me trying to do a weekly one from the get go by myself. I mean, I a lot of people could've... forget the how. Uh, oh, is, is it is it muted or it, okay? No, it's good. Uh, I think a lot of people forget that with EFN, they they thought that the way podcasts were made was that the entire EFN staff did everything for every one of them, and it yeah. wasn't like that at all. Each of the podcasts on EFN were uh, were independently produced. So, yeah. you know, they each had their own staffs, and they all, did, they all did their own things. We just gave them a common place to post it. The the only person who... Um, assist, well, I, I will admit that uh, 8-Track helped me in the beginning with... Uh, I had no idea how to render. I had no idea how to actually create the video for it. He, he helped me out the first few weeks. And from then, uh, uh, Sterling, Sean Wharton, uh, assisted me with the art. 
Uh, he produced the art, and then later he actually created a really nice uh, Adobe After Effects file that I could work with, and he trained me how to use it so that I could uh, create the uh, background art all on my own. But other than that, it was all me. Oh, that's excellent to know. Oh, did you have a question, Tune? Yeah, I did. Uh, I do uh, interviews as well on my own little thing uh, called the Sketchpad on the channel. Well, I guess uh, one question I can throw out is, has there ever been an interview that you felt you weren't prepared for despite like doing all the research and stuff you felt like like five minutes before he's like i don't know if i can do this <laughs> i i've mentioned this i think once but i'll mention it again just because i i never really made this incredibly public i stopped preparing for interviews <laughs> after about three months in i would do more preparation before asking somebody if they wanted to be on the show than i would before the interview uh, I would check out artists and make sure that they didn't have anything that wasn't PG or I, I tried to not have any. Uh, well, I didn't have any rule 34 on my show that I know of. I'm sure it could have happened. But so I tried to check somebody out before I would ask them to be on the show. So there were a lot of people that asked, actually emailed me and I looked at their stuff. I'm like, oh, no, no, that no, oh, we're not mm -hmm. we're not going to talk about those. Put a bikini on them and maybe. But so. When it came time to the actual interview, I had a vague idea of what I would talk about, but never wrote anything down. What I did do, though, before my interview is I would have a good 15 minutes, 30 minutes chat with them, just uh, loose, making sure audio levels are good. And at that time, I would ask them, you know, is there anything you really want to talk about or how was your day or is there a great story you want to tell? And then I would make little notes right there. And if they said something interesting in that part, we'd bring it up during the interview. So did I go into inter interviews unprepared? Yeah, most of them, actually. <laughs> it's wonderful has it been tricky juggling online life with offline you know between uh everfree and uh everything else kind of it's an advantage and it, it's a double-edged sword that i don't live in the state i'm not close to any conventions except japan pony Con, very uh, relatively new but uh well like right now it's the evening for you guys but i'm still uh, i still have a good hour and a half before i have to leave for work so because of the time difference i have a full-time job during the day or actually it starts in the afternoon and goes till nighttime but that never really conflicted schedule wise with the show i could either i woke up early and did the show in their evening or i stayed up late and did the show in their morning so i was able to do the show without huge disruptions in my schedule at work so no i don't think it was a huge problem unless they were from europe I mean, oh man, that constant. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a, a six-hour uh, swing that span one. between like. It's much more difficult Germany. somebody from Europe because yeah, I either had to do it in the afternoon or I had to get up at three a.m. Those were done on the weekends. I was uh, listening to your spotlight with uh, Miss. Uh, it's uh, Fina. How did you pronounce the last name? Uh, again? Imagine the characters from Legend of Zelda, Killian. Killian, <laughs> the, the the VA from Luna and Trixie. Uh, Trixie, sorry. You seem to have a reverence for Halloween as well as cosplay. <laughs> uh, what got you started on either of those? On Halloween or cosplay? Yeah, um, either one. Well, Halloween actually got me a job over here. Halloween is in Japan, but they really don't know what to do with it. <laughs> um, there's a lot of pumpkin-flavored stuff that comes out, but it's not American sweet pumpkin. It's the green actual vegetable you can make soup with this pumpkin, which was a shock to me because, you know, I get like, oh, what's this? Oh, it's pumpkin-flavored chips. Let's eat some. Blah. No, that's a vegetable. What's this? <laughs> No, no, no. It's, no, not good. It's just in recent years that they decided that pumpkin pie is good too. This is, this is the first year. I actually, first time ever that Starbucks has pumpkin spice lattes here. And it's funny because they don't have them at the Starbucks shop. But if you go to like 7-Eleven, they have Starbucks pumpkin pie latte. It's the first time. But sorry, getting off track. Um, a school mm -hmm. that was in the area, uh, had an English teacher from France. Don't ask me. I didn't do the hiring. I, uh, whatever. She spoke mm -hmm. okay English, I guess. But, the school really wanted to have a Halloween party, and the French teacher had no idea what Halloween was. Just had knew the name and knew something about costumes, but no clue. So they actually said, well, can you do a Halloween party? And I I kind of hemmed and hawed, said, oh, you know, I'm kind of busy. But uh, they said, well, we can pay you for it. I can do a Halloween party then. Yes. <laughs> and that eventually led See, to uh, a job. I noticed uh, you uh, when you were talking with uh, Miss Hylin. Um, she mentioned that she had a, a Puss in Boots series that she was working on. Have you discovered any animations through the VAs you've talked about that you maybe might not otherwise known about? With uh, talking to people? Yes, actually. Okay, I'm going to get flack for this. I know I'm going to get flack for this. I still haven't watched a single episode of Avatar. <laughs> not one. And it's not that I think it's a bad show. It looks like fantastic and everybody says it's absolutely great, but I'm so slow to start watching new shows. It's too vast, right? Uh, what? No, it's right now it feels like uh, I'll use uh, Dilbert used uh, a, 
an analogy a while ago that information nowadays is like a fire hose at full blast aimed at a teacup. And mm. <laughs> that's kind of what it feels like to me when I get the, when I hear people with these great shows. Oh, you gotta watch this. Oh, you gotta watch this. You gotta watch this. I'm like, okay, okay. And I just get this deluge of things that I have to watch that I end up not watching any of them. And I'll just watch something else on my own. So I have found some new ones. Uh, one of the people on my show, Stacey Renfro, she said that she was, uh, she mentioned on the show that she was working on something she couldn't talk about. Well, it turns out that what she was working on is the uh, recent award-winning Over the Garden Wall. And if you guys haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. It's it's uh, a beautifully animated, uh, wonderful songs. Not for little kids because it's scary as heck, hmm. but it, it's a wonderful little animation uh, miniseries. And she was actually working on that. And she sent me a message saying, you might want to check out this new show that starts with the letter O. And that's all I could say about it. I'm like, oh, oh OK. But yeah, I've, I've found some new shows and I've really liked them. But I admit, I still have a lot that I have to see that I haven't even started. Say, before I take over the podcast, I'm not re- cutting anyone else off in the background, am I? Nope. I'm just making sure not to steamroll. See, see, <laughs> Jack and I go back. You know, I've been very yep. quiet, I know. So, it's, so I, I have to assure him, because he's used to conversations with me, and he knows that usually I just talk forever. But I, I, I don't want to steamroll, because it's too easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, your educational background then, Jack? Um, my educational background? Uh, well, I uh, finished university with a psychology degree, and I mm-hmm. uh, got my master's degree in psychology. And then I said, screw psychology, I don't want to do it anymore. Came over to Japan <laughs> and started teaching English. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, yeah, I've, uh, and actually, I, I, I'll say this, and I insist that people that study teaching and English make really good English teachers over here. But the best English teachers over here never studied English. Huh. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, but I'm one of the best English teachers I've ever met out here. That's how I can survive for so long. See, the other two that I really uh, respect, one actually studied history, specifically, um, oh, he tells me all the time, and I just forget because I don't really like him, but he's still a good teacher. <laughs> um, I can't remember exactly what specific era but, and area, but it's European some area of history. But he's a really, really good teacher. He's got that perspective. And the other person was... Was, um, it wasn't English teaching, but he studied uh, uh, Shakespearean writing. Hmm. And those, those. Well, begrud- I've often found that begrudging respect is the most sincere kind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I admit fully that uh, he and I, we, we don't like each other very much, but we'll be cordial to each hmm. other because we both respect that we're damn good teachers. I have a question on this yep. because I, in my real life, do education related things. I, hmm. you know, I've studied, uh, almost finished a master's degree in education and. I work with high school students all the time. Um, what makes you say that the people who have studied English teaching are not as good at teaching English in Japan as those who haven't? Because I thought that that would be an advantage for me if I were to ever go do that, that I have studied a, the structure of language, etc. It's a definite advantage in finding a job. I'll admit okay. that fully. Finding a job is much easier with an education degree, but in actual practicality and practical use, uh, the teachers that I've worked with and the teachers that I've seen, those that graduate with uh, an education degree, they don't have, I don't know, I'm trying to not be rude here because I'm not saying they're bad teachers at all, but they seem to have a very formulaic approach to problems. Mm. And And I'll say, I will say that in the education system in the United States, that is a big problem. Like that's a huge yeah. problem. Is there a lot? There's a lot of. Um, I'm not going to say sheepish, but a lot of you know. Basically, here is the new educational directive. Everyone follow in lockstep. And sure. the teachers that tend to try to think outside the box are the ones that end up having to fight uphill the whole time. So coming yeah. into that system, I imagine that I can see that happening. Yeah, and I admit the first few years of me teaching, it was really difficult for me to get respect from the education uh, uh, people because they felt that my degree wasn't as good. And fortunately, the students disagreed because they had no idea who had what degrees. They just knew who was a good teacher. Yeah. But you guys want to hear something really angry that'll make it should make you really angry? Sure. Go on. Mm -hmm. Japan, the Japanese government is going to stop funding universities that have humanities degrees. What? They have decided, and it's not for sure yet, but right now it looks like it's going to pass. They've decided that unless a school offers engineering or practical job related things to the education, they're, they're not going to fund it. Oh, you mean if the school is, is purely liberal arts and. and no, doesn't... I mean if they have that. That's concerning. It is. And. Wouldn't that cause a lot of 
like blowback from the international collegiate community. I mean, wouldn't it never... would if they cared about that? To be honest, most universities are in an uproar, but it's not the universities that are considering this. It's the government and the people funding the government that have decided that they don't need people thinking about the problem. They just need people to fix the problem and that engineering is a good way to make money. So we should teach students that. And that's all. Huh. It, it's my genuine hope that it will be made more public and it will be defeated. But I don't know. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's a worrisome thing for me, to be honest. Yeah, it is getting worrisome. I'm a bit blown back by that. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been here long enough that I can tell you, even junior high school and high school students, I've noticed a drop in their creativity level. I have a student, uh, actually on Tuesday, he's been complaining about my lesson. And he's been complaining because he says we don't do enough book work. And to be honest, in my lessons, book work is only about half of the total lesson. The other part of the lesson is conversation and application, and I like to do a different activity that involves English. Uh, a very common one that I do is we do shadowing or listening. We will find something aired in English. I'll have the script for it. We'll read the script. We'll talk about vocabulary. We'll practice saying it. We'll watch it, and then we'll try to imitate how the actor said it. So I try to choose something they like or would be interested in, and I'm very fortunate that my boss allows me to do this, uh, but I tell you what, Pony works really well. My Little Pony works really well for teaching English. <laughs> Except Applejack. <laughs> I love Applejack, but it's really hard to explain Southern slang. That's all right. She's a background character. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Interesting comment the, the from the in... background interviewer here. Okay. Sorry, oh. had to be said. Had to be said. <laughs> the, the thoughts and the expressions of some of the co-hosts on the <laughs> podcast do not represent the opinions. You guys Never mind. remember, I work my day job. I now work with Jay Holler. I, every day, give him <laughs> crap about Applejack. Every single day. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> every day. <laughs> See, so, uh, get, getting back to allowing um, Mr. Draft here to steamroll, I would wager you have some amazing stories to tell from working from Everfree Network. Would you care to share some? Well, the thing is, to be totally honest, I didn't interact with most of EFM staff the entire time that I was working there. <clears throat> uh, because it isn't working there. Like, I didn't go somewhere and I didn't visit it. Uh, we had a mumble uh, uh, room and we had a Skype room, which got really cluttered. <laughs> I would log in after a weekend. Oh, look at this! 850 new messages. What's the uh, right? scroll, scroll, well, scroll? Well, think scroll, about scroll, it this way, guys. Scroll, like, scroll, how, scroll. Many people, yeah. how many people are involved with this this podcast? Like, what five, six? Mm. All right. I have a rotating but, cast. Yeah, you have. You have a, okay, so you have a rotating cast, and it's like, I mean, what do you, what do you say, five, six regulars, or maybe more? Okay. Yeah. So imagine putting together a Skype group for 13 shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About what, so there were people in there. There were, yeah, there was a good three dozen people in there, and I, I make, you know, I complain about how cluttered it get, but honestly, it could have been a lot worse. But yeah, <laughs> no, as far as specifically interacting with uh, EFN members, I really didn't do it very much. Um, talk to Draft a little bit. Talk to uh, uh, Cowboy Dave a bit. Um, when my f show first started, uh, um, somebody else actually was. I think the technically the producer on my show, and so I didn't get to hit play on the live stream button. So, oh, yeah. which was fine, except that they kept falling asleep. <laughs> that was crescendo, and yeah, I was going to name names, but yes. Well, no, you were mentioning earlier though. You were saying that it's difficult trying to coordinate things with Europe. Well, she's in Manchester, UK. Yeah. So there you yeah, go. I so you're basically you had a host in Japan, mm -hmm. the production person in the UK, trying to air for an American audience. If that makes mm. sense. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I I never had the chance to go to a convention with uh, EFN people. Yes, I you did. I don't. You went to Everfree Northwest. That's right. That's right. I went. I went to Everfree Northwest. It wasn't specifically with you guys, but I did go there and we interacted a bit. Well, you were very busy. Fast. You had a couple of really good panels. Okay, I got to yeah. tell a story about this. I will still I'll <laughs> steamroll this. I knew he was going to be there, and, mm -hmm. and like Jack and I had had we knew each other for what a year and a half before that point. I mean, I think that's about right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because originally he was a regular attendee of Michelle Krieber's live streams and then he was interested in potentially starting a podcast so we actually well I helped him develop it side then. side note my question was actually the first question to be asked in any of the uh, live viewings of Saturday Night Song Okay. We, yeah, we always we always made a point to do a Nostalgia like Jack question or a Costa <laughs> Jack or a, and, and I, I song. yeah yeah and I, and I still called Black Griffin Greg Hale every mm -hmm. chance I can that's does from him um anyway so we had known each other for a long time over 
the course of uh, you know a couple or several months at that point at least. It was, it was like mm. so. Anyway, I had never met him in person, and so I knew he was going to be at Everfree Northwest. And Dave came up to me, uh, Cowboy Dave came up to me because I was upstairs because we were live streaming the main hall, and he said, "Yeah, I ran into Osaka Jack." He goes, "That guy's really short." <laughs> I like, think it, he hadn't wow. run into me yet, but he had seen the picture of me on Twitter. Yeah, he saw the picture of you on Twitter, and so he's like, "Yeah, that guy's really short. Like he like he's way shorter than you think." And I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's all right. Then he, then Jack finally shows up at the live streaming. He like, er, we're at, at the booth where we were live streaming. He looks at me and he goes, "Hello, draft." And I look at him and I'm like, "You're really tall." He's like a solid <laughs> seven inches taller than me, like towering over. I'm like, they told me you were short. I turned what to Dave. Happened? I'm like, I'm like, Dave, how the hell did you get this so wrong? <laughs> what had happened with that is uh, actually MemJ and uh, John Joseko were the first people to recognize me by my name tag. And they're great people, but they are short. Yep. And uh, I insisted on a picture with us. I actually didn't stand up for the picture. I dropped down to my knee. So I was a little bit shorter than they were on my knee level. So when the picture <laughs> was taken, it looked like I was a few inches shorter than uh, MemJ or John Joseko. <laughs> so that's what uh, Drake... That's what Cowboy Dave saw, and when he relayed the information, like, wow, I know how short those two are. He must be, like, midget size. Yeah, that's actually what he said, is <laughs> midget size, and I was like, oh, like, really? And, and I was like, okay, I didn't expect that, but I was willing to roll with it, and then he shows up, and he's, like, taller than me, I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> towering over. But to his credit, I'll say it because he won't, he hosted a really cool panel at Everfree Northwest. I wish you could find the excuse to get over here somehow again to, to the States uh, because yeah. really good at doing, like, it was like a game show panel. I don't remember what you yep. exactly called it, but like he ran uh, it. Osaka Jack's game. I, it, I reused awesome. up so much. I used up so much creativity making it that, that I didn't have a good creativity for the name. So yeah, Osaka Jack's game. <laughs> good enough. The, the, the panel, you know, the panel made up for the lack of a good name because yeah, it was great. Um, and actually one of, uh, one of the airings of my show is a recording of the game. You can go check it out on EFN's uh, uh, channel. I was a dumb person and didn't use a microphone, but you could still hear me. (laughs) You seem to, um, again, I'm drawing back from that podcast again, you were very enthusiastic about uh, Big Hero 6. Are there any other Disney or Pixar or other Western-based animated films that you were uh, hyped for or hyped for now? Like I mentioned, I use uh, uh, different things in my English classes, and uh, when I'm teaching adult students, uh, I like to use movies uh, rather than TV shows because it's something that they've seen in theaters or had the chance to see in theaters. But the problem is that action movies aren't great for teaching English because it's difficult to do uh, in English. <laughs> <laughs> was that a Rocky? That was whatever action hero you want it to be. I, okay. I am very the law. I am the law. Yeah. <laughs> But um, action movies. Why would meant... they ever remake it? It was perfect the first time. Actually, it, was. it was really good the second time. The first time it was horrible. But, <laughs> but it, did, it did give a Stallone sounding drunker than ever, arguing with what was it? Who was it? The Rob well, Schneider. Rob Schneider was in there yep. somehow. Yep. Uh, <laughs> He shows up in the, the first scene, I'm... and the first thing I think is, God, I hope he dies. <laughs> I know that makes me a bad person, but I was so disappointed he didn't die in the movie. Like, this is mm. like an action movie. Give him an ex- Somebody shoot him, please. He was Call comic it. relief, and he had the mentality of a child. There's no way they're going to kill him. I need a relief from movie. his comedy. <laughs> well, then watch, uh, uh, oh, what was the name? Watch any of his other movies. Then you'll get a relief from the comedy. Oh! There you go. <laughs> there you but go. Um, action movies uh, are... They don't work so well for it. Dramas, a lot of the dramas that they know are so cheesy that I just can't help but my eyes roll. So I like to do, quote unquote, kids movies for it. And uh, uh, Disney movies work well. Pixar movies are fantastic because they're good movies on their own. And you get a good movie that has good dialogue and it works well. Unfortunately, uh, even though I love it, Wally is not good for teaching English because 45 minutes of the movie has no speech. So it's difficult to say, okay, repeat after me. <laughs> good, good, but more effort, more effort. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So I've gone through the uh, litany of Pixar movies, um, not Cars because I don't care for that merchandising anime as well. Brave is another difficult one because the accents are so thick it's difficult to understand. Uh, I'm trying to think of some great ones that I have. Uh, Big Hero 6, or as it's called over here, Baymax, which I'm sorry, I think it's a better name. That one works really well. Frozen was really popular, and I had no problem using that for teaching English class. That's fine. Uh, they didn't get into A Bug's Life at all, which kind of surprised me, and I'm not sure why. 
that one was not popular at all. But no, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, what uh, I'm debating whether or not to use the new Pixar one, um, uh, Inside Out. What's the English name? I, 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 it's I Inside Out. Inside Out. Okay. Yeah, it's Inside Out. Japanese name is actually called Inside Head, which makes a lot more sense to me, even though it, does, it even though it isn't an idiom of its own. But Inside Head. Oh, okay. I know where they are. I thought it was a fantastic movie. I'm just not sure if it's going to be decent for teaching English or not. I'll have to listen to it again. But yeah, I, I try to I try all of them. Surprisingly. Lord of the Rings was a terrible movie to teach English to. There was a lot of, like, what, Elvish in there and British it's, accents. and It's nothing but Elvish and British accents and the names of people and the names of... Di- My student was staring at the script and looking at me and going like, can we just watch it? I'm like, yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> She understood it better when she didn't have to read what they were saying. See, I've been led to believe that you're a bit of a, a road warrior for travel. Uh, what other exotic places have you visited besides Japan? I don't take offense to the term road warrior, but since I don't have a car and haven't had a car for uh, 16 years, I really can't call myself a road warrior. Um, you can call me a rail rat if you'd like, though. Because I right. do like uh, traveling on trains. Even though I've been here for so long, I really like traveling in train. I've been to almost every island in Japan by train that you can get to by train. I have not been to Okinawa by train because uh, there is none. But I've been to the northernmost island, Hokkaido. And I've been to... Um, actually, I visited uh, Tohoku, uh, the area that was hit by the tsunami. I visited there twice, uh, three times before the tsunami and uh, once after the tsunami. Giant, that, that was a very emotional trip. Um, I really like taking trips inside Japan uh, more than I like traveling abroad. I have been to Singapore to see. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. And I have been to every Northwest. Uh, 2012? 2013? 13 uh, was the second 13? one. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but I really prefer to travel inside the country I'm living in. Uh, when I was living in the States, I would take road trips just in a general direction. I'd be like, all right, I've got four days off. I'm going to drive a day and a half this way and then a day and a half back. Thanks. And yeah, uh, so I, I try to travel inside Japan by train when I can. What was your uh, biggest first initial culture shock when you got there? Mountain. I was I was born in Chicago, but uh, we quickly moved to the St. Louis area. And I have a lot of fond memories of St. Louis, but there are no mountains in St. Louis. And okay, technically the Ozark Mountains are technically mountains, but considering that you can't even see them from a distance at all, I'm not going to call them mountains. I'm sorry. Sorry, I... I <laughs> I know they meet the technical definition, but no, it's a gentle sloping hill with lots of... Tr- no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the first day I came here, I arrived in late afternoon, and by the time I got to my apartment, it was night. So I just went to my uh, apartment, and I collapsed on the floor and fell asleep. When I woke up in the morning, I looked out the front window. There was a mountain there. I was in Maibashi at the foot of Mount Akagi. I had never lived... I had seen mountains, and I had visited mountains and trips, but I had never lived next to a mountain before. It had never been a part of my area. And just looking out, and I saw this huge, towering mountain. I, wow! That big! And I know that's a stupid thing to say, but that's the only thing I could think to say. I'm not sure if that qualifies as culture shock now that I think about it, but that was a huge, shocking thing for me. It's, it's an amazing story. <laughs> I guess we want to do a funnier story is the peanut butter here sucks. <laughs> okay. I'd like to hear the explanation well, for this. I, and I'll admit this fully. In the last five years, um, international uh, trans- international deliveries and items have become much easier. Three years, uh, two years ago, I actually purchased for the first time. I was able to order business shoes to be delivered to me online. And before that, it mm-hmm. was impossible to do. Uh, um, I don't know why, <clears throat> but it wasn't just that my sh- shoe size isn't available here. It's that I literally could not get any shop uh, outside Japan to send them to me. They would not do it. And in the last two or three years, they've started doing it. So I can get more things. I can get real peanut butter. But uh, uh, 13 years ago when I came, I went to the store and I got bread and I got cheese. I'm like, oh, let's get some peanut butter and jelly for the times I don't feel like cooking. And took a bit, but I found this stuff. It was, it said peanut and it had, it looked the same. Like, all right, great. Turns out it's called peanut cream. And if you can imagine, it's, uh, it's kind of like whipped cream, except it's peanut. So it's very, it's not bad, but when you're expecting peanut butter and this stuff comes out like a marshmallow, okay, that's, <laughs> that, that's not peanut butter. That's, that's a fluffer nutter already mixed up for me. That does not sound pleasant. It's good. It's just not what you want with jelly on a sandwich. No. So that, yeah, that was like the, the second or third day. That was a big shock to me. Like, huh. And then I did find regular peanut butter, but it was like, um, the the si- uh, a, a can of uh, uh, Skippy the size of my fist was eight and a half bucks. I'm like, oh. I 
don't miss it that much. That's okay. I'm good. <laughs> So uh, I later found an import store online, and you could get real items, but it took a month and a half to get them. So I did eventually get peanut butter, but just took a while. Let's go with something more fun here. What's your uh, preferred drink? Like alcoholic or just any time? Oh, you go any kind. Do one of each if you'd like. Cola. I, I I have a sweet tooth, and I really like cola as my go-go juice. I can drink coffee, but I prefer not to because I know mm. I'm addicted to caffeine. I know if I don't have caffeine, then I get a migraine during the day. Mm. So I prefer to just have a sweet cola. I don't have diet, but mm. yeah, cola's my go-to drink. They actually have a, a Pepsi every year. Uh, they have a specialty flavor that comes out. And sometimes it's absolutely fantastic, and sometimes it's terrible. Uh, like they had blue Hawaiian Pepsi, which was blue, and it had uh, pineapples in it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be clear, it's not pineapples added to Pepsi. It, it's just it's a soda that's blue with pineapple taste to it, uh, with no caffeine. It's called Pepsi Blue Hawaii, but it doesn't have any Pepsi in it. Um, actually, Pepsi Ice Cucumber was fantastic. I never <laughs> expected to enjoy a cucumber soda, but I tell you what, as long as you sipped it, that was a darn refreshing thing in the heat of summer. It was really odd to me that I have to admit that, but yeah, that was, that was real. But they actually came out with this week, it just started, Pepsi Ghost. And it's Halloween themed, and the idea is it's a mystery flavor. So. Oh, it sounds like those Harry Potter or flavors. It's like, that's, yeah, yeah. it's like the white airheads. You ever had those? The yes, mystery yes. flavor? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've already had, I've had two bottles of them, and both bottles have been cherry, and I'm hoping that there are other flavors, and it's not just cherry, but I'm not sure. But they're beautiful designs on the bottle anyway, and it's the same price, so I'll get it for a bit. Would you say that if the next one you have isn't cherry, that it would, or is cherry, it would haunt you? <laughs> that, that was, that was terrible. Well, you're getting into the spirit of it. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> More draftisms. It's been yeah, a while. Except he's dead wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 I ran out of alcohol. <laughs> Damn. We well, need to go get more spirits then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I laughed at my own joke mm. because I don't need you guys to do that. I'm going to be my own audience. <laughs> he's funny. Uh, of the friends you've made since coming to Brony, uh, which one would you say is the craziest? Craziest? Yes. Hmm. Difficult. Most outgoing. Here we go. If you don't like the term crazy. Okay. Oh, he might disagree with me, but I'm going to say Buttons. Buttons Pony. He is one of the quietest, most polite guys ever, but I have never seen somebody comment more positively on everybody's status than him. I only know like two or three people that really hate him, and they're terrible people, so I don't really count their opinion. <laughs> wow. So, like, outgoing in person. Like, if you meet him in person and talk to him in person... He's completely different than he is online. Like online, he's yeah, he's positive and supportive. But when you know, in person, he's a lot more like boisterous. And, oh, yeah. I believe, I absolutely believe it, and that, that's you know, that's I, I can kind of tell that just in the few private conversations we've had. That yeah, I, I can tell he wants to occasionally just explode on something, but he's polite about it. yeah. So I would say Buttons Pony is uh, one of the most uh, outgoing guys, for, and he's quiet and polite. And that's not a dichotomy, dang it. It's like you can be a grumpy person and a good person. That's not impossible. See, uh, I noticed before you expressed a disenfranchisement for like shows like Lost that you feel like they didn't go anywhere. Um, are there any more things recent that you know uh, felt like that were just stringing you along? Um, pretty much everything having to do with the uh, next presidential election, yeah. Huh. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Do you, do you look at our current race over here and go, thank God I'm in Japan? Kind of, yeah. Huh, can't falter there. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to for a second try to pretend that Japan's government is any better, but it's different. Um, hmm. I will give you this, and you guys can use this and mock as you like, as I've mocked as you like. Japan just started a system called My Number. Oh, hold on, wait, let me use the katakana pronunciation. My Numbaru. <laughs> So the idea is, the idea, and it's a good idea, the idea is we need to streamline a lot of these government processes because we have too much red tape. Solution, we will assign a number to every person, and this number will be the only number we use when dealing with anything government about them. Not a terrible idea. The problem is that this number is going to be delivered to every Japanese person on Monday, October 5th. And as of now, nobody has gotten one. <laughs> wow. Well then. This number, and the number is going to come with a card. And the idea is that the card will be uh, for use for your pension, your social security benefits, your taxes, your health insurance, um, your income tax. All of this will be handled by this card. 
But if you lose the card, then somebody else can use, can take all of your information. All right. I just want to state now for the recording, today is October 7th, yes. and this is now two days late, and this is essentially your everything in Japan. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> Fortunately, not everything has changed over to the system yet, but... Um, but it was funny, actually, uh, well, tragic, well, funny, like one of those, <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> funny. Two and a half weeks ago, there was a massive cyber attack on prefectural offices in Japan. Of the 47 prefectures in Japan, only one was able to keep their information secure from these uh-huh. cyber attacks. Three of them were able to stop the cyber attacks from shutting down the website. But the rest of them have pretty much said, yeah, they shut down our website. They took a lot of our data. We have no idea of knowing what they might have done. Wow. Anyway, your new My Number system is going to come in and make sure nobody steals your number because that they'll have your address and your credit card information. Uh, this, this is the kicker for me, the My Number thing. They want to connect it to your bank account to make it easier for you to pay tax, which would mean anybody who did any of these cyber attacks very soon is going to be able to take whatever they like out of your bank account. Wait, yeah, so something about that doesn't sit right. So a number that's going to uni- that's going to unify all Japanese public services, whatever. They actually gave it an English name. Yep. Wow. Technically, it's katakana, but yep. Wow. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I'm. I doubt there's any perfect government system. I'm aware of the Japanese things and the American things, and yeah, a lot of them just. Whoo. Okay. I. Uh... <laughs> what's a What's a project you wish you never started? Oh, project I wish you never started. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure. I don't. Hmm. I don't know that I've got any huge. There might have been a few things that I like started for a day or so and then just meh dropped it. But oh, okay, that's excellent. I mean, even the stuff that I've done that's failed, at least if I can get wisdom from it, then it's not worth it. It's a good thing no, to live by. Long yeah. ago, twenty years, twenty-five, yeah, twenty or twenty-two years ago, I was. Uh, I was on. I was a big contributor to a message board, and we did stories with our characters, and it was almost a daily thing, typing up two or three different pages of text on what our characters were doing. And I don't remember much of it now, but at the same time, I know that it's uh, it, it was good practice for writing. So yeah, I don't I don't know that I have anything that I really wish I hadn't been a part of. No, nothing comes to mind, honestly. And that oh, that's sounds excellent. incredibly egotistical. So let me make up something right now. There was the Pizza <laughs> Appreciation no. Society that I just wish I hadn't been a part of. because Pizza Jeff... Appreciation si- Society. <laughs> well, the problem was that we couldn't agree on whether or not corn was an acceptable topping. And it what? Just... <laughs> I, I find it interesting how divided you got over that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, that's uh, corn is a common pizza topping in Oh, okay. Almost any um, pizza that you get, corn will be on there. If you go to Italy, you can get steamed mussels still in the shell on your pizza. You can get that here if you order a seafood, yeah. Yep, it's mm. actually very tasty. You just don't eat the shells. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. See, uh, was was Pony your first involvement with YouTube? With YouTube? Yes. Uh, what do you think? Well, I mean, I had watched stuff on YouTube before, obviously. You know, I think it was. Yeah, I think that's the first time that other people were able to access my voice. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I uh, I hadn't done any large podcasts before that. Or if I have, I've blocked out the entire memory, so they were that bad. Um <laughs> that Pizza Appreciation Society podcast. I don't blame you for repressing. It was just too salty. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's such a cheesy that joke. Was... There it is. Uh... Okay. <laughs> oh my god. All right then. All right. You know what? Our efforts here are really half baked. Let's just <laughs> let's just get around <laughs> to the next topic, right? Okay. In the words right. of Homer. No. All right then. Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> See, um, I, I, I got this idea off of Final Draft, actually. I recall him being the, the biggest opportunity that slipped by was uh, almost getting um an interview with Weird Al. Have you have you had ever had a fate rip like a great moment out of your hands? <laughs> Stupid man, it's very fun. Wow, that's cool that you... I heard. got really close. Yeah, if you didn't hear it, I got really yeah. close, and then I got a message from, uh, from RCA Records, actually, saying Weird Al is currently uh, preoccupied and can't, you know, can't Dull. fall through... I had a day and a time set and a forwarded email I saw from it from him saying he was up for it. And then, yeah, Mandatory Fun came out and he won a Grammy. What a jerk. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's a darn shame. I'm sorry. I'm so inconsiderate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there were a few times where I had the chance to get a uh, 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 MLP staff member on my show, but for whatever reason, it fell through. Um, and I'm not bitter about that. It's just kind of a <clears> disappointing <throat> thing. Uh, the only one that kind of cheeses me off is, 
I, I won't say any name, but there was a staff member who agreed to be on my show and didn't show up uh, because they had something else they had to do. And then they asked if they could do it the next day and then didn't show up. Mm. Six time flake on me. They, they flaked on me six times. And it was after the sixth time that I got an email from their assistant saying, oh, they have forgotten about this and wondering if they could reschedule. And I just said, oh, geez, I'm so busy the rest of the month. I'll let you know. <laughs> And that was it. And, you know, I, I know the general rule is it's supposed to be one message, two messages, no response, give it up. But it was staff and I was so, like, oh, man, I wish I could get the staff. So I, I kept like pushing a little, pushing. If they hadn't kept agreeing to it, I probably wouldn't have kept pushing. But they kept saying, oh, I'm so sorry that I missed it. I, it's just a bad planning or a bad situation. We'll totally do it this day. Like, all right, great. And I believe them. And a little annoying to me because every time that happened, I had to get up two and a half hours early. Mm. So over the entire course of it, it was like, that's about 30 hours of sleep that I missed. I'm not pleased with the. Okay. I am disappointed I, I could not uh, uh, convince them that my show was important enough to not forget. That was disappointing. And I would have liked I to go. Totally I, obviously, that. I would like to go to more uh, conventions. Just geography and timing is not great for them. There was a uh, one more thing I noticed. I gotta stop saying that. Uh, you've had a chance to talk to uh, Jenny Nicholson and Griffin Lewis from Sure Clock yes. Pones. Um, it seems to be uh, their gathering is currently on hiatus. Are there any other fan works projects or uh, content creators you really miss uh, that since have discontinued? Um, I I really enjoy, uh, uh, or I have enjoyed for a long time, reading a lot of web comics. Um, most of them. I, I Mega Tokyo, I just couldn't get into. But a lot of them I really didn't mm. like. But I noticed that any time a web comic would say on hiatus, if that hiatus did not have a specific end date mentioned during the hiatus, they weren't coming back. And if they did come back and then said, I need to take another hiatus, just give up because they're not coming back. They're tired of it and they don't want to do it and they can't find a way to exit. And I, I'm not sh you know, that's not 100%, obviously. And I do hope a lot of uh, fan projects that have been stalled or whatever come back and people enjoy them. But in my opinion, but in my experience, any anytime there's a hiatus, the chance of them coming back is exponentially lower every week the hiatus continues. So I do hope they come back. You know, it'd be nice to see uh, Friendship with Witchcraft or uh, more parody things. I, I I hope Miss Bunny Swan takes over the new uh, Quest Your Girls songs and does literal versions of those because her stuff's great. But yeah, yeah sorry, I can't have a good ending to this sentence. <laughs> no, that was uh, excellent. See, so, uh, you actually, uh, a lot of your answers did recover and actually covered a lot of my questions. So, unless you gentlemen, uh, Toon, you have any other questions still? Fallen? I just want to mention draft? this real fast when I was doing the interview with uh, uh, Jenny and Griffin. That's the first time mm -hmm. I had tried to have more than one person on the show. And for mm -hmm. some reason, talking to Jenny was just fine. Talking to Griffin was just fine. When I tried to arrange a three-person call, Skype would not behave for more than six minutes at a time. Mm. So, that interview, I think the whole thing is about an hour and it's literally composed of about 12 different Skype calls where we recorded. And then all of a sudden, oh, what do you think, Jenny? <clears throat> Crap, we've lost her, haven't we? Oh, yeah, we have. All right, hold on. <laughs> let me try again. And then I call back and say, and I'd be like, what was the last question you remembered? Um, You asked something about this. Oh, OK, that was 10 minutes ago. All right, hold on. That was a nightmare to edit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember listening into that, and I remember looking over, and I was like, oh, yeah, so-and-so is doing the, this Camp Energy bit. I remember when that came out. Oh, my God, that's a year ago? I've been at this shit this long? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yup. Oh, God. I became one of them. <laughs> oh, as, as I was saying, uh, Toon, did you have anything else? I actually did not know that you lived in Japan. I I, had, oh, yeah. uh, I was curious thing um one thing is uh, do you have like any tips for like people who are like, like coming to visit japan like in its current status right now like what's something that's if you're going to japan like what's something you should like absolutely do a lot of people get really worried that they don't speak the language and i try to tell them to relax about that it's more important to be prepared than it is to know the language here the trains are absolutely your friend and there's a bunch of websites that'll tell you an exact train schedule as long as you have your train schedule planned out to the, uh, and I'm, it sounds weird, but you plan it out to the minute exactly which trains you get on and stuff, it's not a problem to get anywhere you're going, as long as you do it in advance. There, we get a lot of European tourists who come over here and somehow expect that if their original language isn't understood, then somebody will understand them when they speak English. Mm. So it's kind of funny to, in a train station, we'll say a recent one was French. 
She went to the train staff and started speaking in French. And the train staff just stared at her. And then she switched over and says, I wish to board the train that's going to here. When time can I do this? <laughs> and staff is staring at her. And she tried to enunciate as clearly as she could. But it was still English and the staff didn't speak any English. And so eventually uh, I and uh, the person with me are just like, they're not going to understand your English because they don't speak English. Where do you want to go? And she told us the name and we are like, oh, okay, well, you see this huge map on the wall next to you that has the name of that station and the number by it? That's the amount of the train ticket you need to buy. Yeah. <laughs> how many languages do you, how many languages do you know? Um, I know English and American. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got that joke. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> the school oh, that I that teach at actually has uh, a significant history. It's been around for about 35 years. Um, the current owner is incredibly cool and really good at this, but the previous owner was an incredible uh, Britannophile. She refused to teach anything other than Cambridge English with British accent. She refused to hire anybody that was not <laughs> from England. And every book she has is from Cambridge or is from, it, it, it has to be published in England or she wouldn't use it. And a big part Part of our school is uh, we're we're not a huge school. We're a smaller school. We're a smaller Akilas, and we advertise this that um, if somebody's younger sibling comes to the school, you can use the same book that your sibling did, and you don't have to buy them. And it's a great boon for us, and it gets a lot of students. So I have to teach from these old books that are very very British, and I have to say, okay, so uh, what did you do at the weekend? <laughs> uh, yes, I think math are difficult as well. Did you learn them at university? (laughs) No, I didn't learn them at university. I went to college. (laughs) Usually with my students, I'll tell them, well, this is what the book says, and that's British, but the American would say blah, blah, blah. So I make a joke about that, but yeah, it is. uh, there is a significant difference. I'll tell you this one. The only... uh, complete opposite difference that I found is the word quite. For any American, quite is a significant amount. But for any British person, quite means an insignificant small amount. So if a British person says it's quite cold, they mean it's a little bit cold. I'm not sure why that word is completely opposite for us, but there you go. I know, or I used to know American Sign Language. Not fluent, but enough to get by. My Japanese is not mm. fantastic, but I can make myself understood. I use... Sign language is universal, though, right? No. No, no, no. Japanese? Oh. I know a little bit of Japanese sign language, but not much. Uh, uh, American Sign Language and Japanese Sign Language are totally different. Uh, totally com- Gestures are pretty much the same everywhere. <laughs> so I could do non-sign language <laughs> gestures and get myself understood anywhere. But no, no. Uh, Japanese Sign Language and American Sign Language are completely different. In, in graduate school, uh, uh, my best friend was Cherokee, and he taught me a little bit, but I can't remember a lot any of that now to save my life but it was fun communicating in Cherokee back and forth especially when the teacher couldn't understand us <laughs> uh, yeah uh, it's Spanish I, I, I took uh, five years of Spanish in, back in high school again forgotten most of it hace mucho años que me no estudia español lo siento it's better than I got <laughs> how about you Tune better than you got yeah probably <laughs> yeah I'm half Latino you kicked my ass right there yeah I'm half as well so <laughs> yeah apparently the half that doesn't speak it <laughs> touche touche <laughs> Indeed. Uh, well, I, I think we've we've come our course. I have more than enough material. I'll have this up in about another week. Hey, I had loved having you on, sir. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Gracias. Oh, yeah. uh, one more thing. Uh, Tune, you wanted to you uh, you're going to Ciderfest. You wanted to talk to Draft about that. I don't exactly understand the details oh, yes. behind that. Oh uh, yes, yes, Draft, sir. Um, That's I where did. I recognize your name. You you emailed me. Yes, yes, I did. Oh. Um, I saw the name and I'm like, where have I seen that before? Okay, yeah, I've been terrible at getting back to emails. Um, no, no, that's all right. You were I interested spoke with... doing programming staff, right? Uh, well, not programming staff per se. I don't exactly know how to like. Uh, how should I say this? I wanted to help like with hosting some of like, or at least participating in some of like the events like with. Um, before okay. you, before yeah, just so you know, I'm actually planning on going to Japan PonyCon. Woo! Yeah, and I'm going to be spending. I didn't. I didn't mention it during the interview, but I'm actually going to be trying to spend at least a couple days in Osaka visiting with Woo! Jack. And I'm going to try and <laughs> crash his, his classes if possible. We'll see. <laughs> he's got. He's got to get approval. They got to warn him. I'm coming. I'm sure she'll be fine with it. It's just the students I'm concerned about. But so the, you know, uh, I'll, I'll scare the students away. Don't worry about it. So the uh, yeah. the Japan PonyCon, the exact name and city. Well, the name is. Japan PonyCon. Uh, there was actually there was actually debate on that, other word, over whether it should be a cutesy title or something. And we decided that because any reference we came up with was not clear, that Japan PonyCon was the best name because it told you what it was, told you where it was, 
and was easy to remember. So yeah, the name is Japan Pony Con. I'm uh, Steph. I'm head VIP relations, and one of the uh, there are English speakers on staff, but not many. <laughs> But yes, uh, Japan PonyCon is going to be May 4th and 5th, uh, 2016. We, uh, we had uh, a convention. Our last convention was also in May in 2015. 2014, we actually had three Japan PonyCons. I'm just going to spell out. We were the first Pony convention of 2014. We had it on January 2nd. Uh, we also had one in May, and then we had one in September. And after September, we decided, yeah, we're not going to do that again. We're going to do one a year because this is killing us. Uh, but yeah, Japan PonyCon, we don't have any confirmed guests yet, but we do have some artists that are going to be in the alley. And I'll tell you something very different in Japan PonyCon as opposed to other conventions. Artist Alley gets swarmed. There is a line to get into Artist Alley, and if you're not in Artist Alley in the first 20 minutes, most everything's gone. Wow. Um, mm. If somebody is in Japan and happens to be an artist, I highly recommend going to the Artist Alley because the uh, there aren't as many bronies here as there are in other countries, but they are rabid for good because there are none here. It was actually just this week, it was huge controversy. Uh, season one and season two were translated into Japanese and were aired. And that's it. They stopped season two. Uh, after season two, it was boom. Nothing. No news. The Twitter account shut down. The website shut down. I have the last set of Japanese, uh, Japan made plushies, beautiful plushies, but then they stopped. I had the last full set of them. But this week, to DVD, uh, to Netflix, which just started in Japan, you can watch Equestria Girls in Japanese with the original cast, which leads a lot of people to believe that season three was dubbed just never released and so we're trying to push like is it available can we get it somewhere can somebody bootleg it who's a me? <laughs> we're pushing around trying to get that so yeah so anything in artist alley that's uh pony related and it's good stuff but yeah it gets people swarm over it buy it and it's gone really fast so um, what you're saying in terms of like the you know the release schedule and just shenanigans is there is that japan is getting the hasbro treatment just like the rest of us kind of except <laughs> it's worse because we have to wait we not only do uh, uh the hasbro treatment but then we have to wait for <clears throat> shout uh, not shout the uh, the company over here that has taken the licensing to it to decide to do something with it so we get another, another company added on to hasbro but so far, have been no problems with uh, Japan PonyCon. We're attempting to get the person who uh, worked on the music for the uh, Japanese dubs, but no word whether or not he'll be able to attend. Um, but yes, it's, it's going to be our first two-day convention, uh, May 4th and 5th. So that's going to be a lot of fun and not a lot of extra work for everybody. Yeah. I'm trying to go. I'm trying <laughs> to get there. I've already started saving. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, we encourage everybody to go. Uh, this year's, it's going to be in uh, the Narita Hotel, which is right next to the airport. So literally, I mean, if you wanted to fly in, go to the convention and fly out, you could. Um, or you could, it, it's, a, um, I think, a 30-minute train ride to downtown Tokyo. Um, it's a really, really nice hotel. It's a, actually a wonderful hotel that we usually don't get the chance to even bid on. But because the week we're doing it is a busy holiday week, nobody wants to get married that week. So they had an opening for two days for us. So, yay, Golden Week. We get to use a hotel that we didn't get to use before. Woo! <laughs> Boo travel costs. <laughs> Boo for travel costs. Sorry about that. And yes, there's going to be a lot of people traveling everywhere all the time. Sorry. But it also means that I can go because the last one was on a Saturday and I had to get up at uh, 4 a.m. to make it out there in time. <laughs> and it was really hard. But uh, no, I, I would really like to see a lot of people come to Japan PonyCon. It's a good convention. We just opened up uh, Redbubble and TeePublic uh, stores. And would really appreciate if somebody would uh, purchase our stuff. We're trying to get a new piece of art there every week. Uh, and a lot of the artists that work for Japan PonyCon are just fantastic. To my, to my knowledge, uh, Ponyco, the mascot for Japan PonyCon, is the only pony to date aside from Big Mac, that has a Magical Girl transformation sequence. <laughs> and I, I'm serious. She's got her own animated sequence that people have made for her. So, so I really hope to see a lot of people at Japan PonyCon. It'd be a lot of fun. Come on, bye! All right. Or buy our goods. That's good, too. I think dra I think some people... Draft, you did Spirit membership last year, right? I've done Spirit membership twice. Yeah, okay, yeah. so they do a cool... So, as people who are listening may or may not know, I'm involved in tons of conventions. I run <laughs> one. I also am programming director for another, and 
potentially pro- well no i am a programming director for the chicago con and a bunch of stuff so i do a lot of stuff anyway uh japan pony con does something that other conventions really should pick up on because it's a really good idea they call mm-hmm. what's yeah they call it the spirit membership basically yep. for 12 bucks they will ship you from japan a badge and a con book and some sort of like like souvenir so the first one i got a set of chopsticks that had the Japan Pony Con on it. The second one I got it in my hand right here is uh, it's like an LED flashlight strobe thing. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's twelve bucks, and mm-hmm. you get all this cool stuff, and it's from Japan. And if you're, a yeah, to- and it's it's an official. I mean, it's the exact same badge that people who are attending Japan Pony Con get. It's the exact yep. same con book that we get, yep. and that thing's that thing's high quality. I'm sorry, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's got a nice print on the front. I, I know this sounds like spam, but it's such a good idea though to you know as from a convention organizer standpoint it's a great idea because yeah japan is difficult for a lot of people to get to mm-hmm. and so that's a great way for people like me to participate if you can't go and yep. uh, i've done that and twice then... and i'm going to do it for each of these that happen that i can't go to but i'm trying to go to the next one yeah <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, if you can't go, if you can't get a t-shirt, please consider getting Spirit Membership. It's like 12 bucks. You get a con book, you get a badge, and you get a souvenir from Japan. I'm and, sorry and, and, that the Apple Pie Kit Kats have run out. I'm sorry. We don't well, and I was going to say, just to clarify, like $12 and then they ship it to you or whatever. Like it, It's yeah. not like you're paying for shipping on top of that. Like That includes everything. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> So we're good to wrap up there, gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, uh, final draft. May I add you? Um, 